Welcome to Super Life with me, Darren Olean, a podcast where we explore, discover, and share solutions that promote a healthier life and a better world. Together, we'll ignite possibilities, inspire change, and build sovereignty, creating a roadmap towards a super life for you and for all. Get ready to start living your super life. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This is Super Life with me, Darren Olean. How are you? What's going on? We are going to dive into this solo episode. Yep, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the wave and the more and more health news around Ozempic, what that is, the GLP-1 receptor, semi-glutide, which is the chemical version of Ozempic. Uh, We're going to talk about the pluses, the minuses, and then the natural ways that you can improve your receptivity to then get the benefits without the drug. And yes, there are some side effects. So tune in to this solo episode of Super Life talking about semi-glutide Ozempic. Okay, so... Let's understand what the GLP-1 receptor is, because that's what the ozempic or the semi-glutide, the chemical, is the main chemical of the ozempic. It's really about the GLP-1 receptor. The GLP-1 receptor are protein structures found in certain surfaces of cells in the body. They are the target of both naturally occurring GLP-1, which is a a glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor. That's what GLP-1 is. It's a hormone. And this GLP-1 receptor, this this semi-glutide, is the medication for that GLP-1 receptor. Okay, so... Where are these GLP-1 receptors located? They're located in various tissues, including the pancreatic beta cells, the gastrointestinal tract, as well as certain areas of the brain. What do they do? Why do we naturally have these GLP-1 receptors? Well, they activate and are their receptors and they trigger several physiological responses that help regulate what? They help regulate blood sugar and appetite. So as you can imagine, super important when so many people have prediabetes, diabetes, or overweight, and the, the firestorm that's going on in our world, in our modern world, in our westernized world, and here in America. So the natural activator, the body has its own GLP-1 hormone, which is released by the intestines after eating. And so at the end of this episode, I'm going to tell you a bunch of cool things that you can do naturally to improve your GLP-1 hormone receptor, which is then going to help regulate your blood sugar and control your appetite. And then you don't need a prescription to get to have those effects. Okay. So let's look at the semi-glutide. This is the chemical. It's a peptide uh, that is this GLP-1 chemical version. And it, this synthetic GLP-1 hormone is designed to obviously acti- activate this GLP-1 receptor uh, and has and is quite powerful, uh, and it is long-lasting, powerful, and it acts in these natural ways, these natural receptors that we have. The brand names that are marketed for the semi-glutide is Ozempic for diabetes, and this other one, uh, we, we go v, uh, and these are for weight management, obviously. So, uh, what you do is it's available. It's, it's once weekly, uh, subcutaneous injection. 
or as a daily oral tablet. That's how people are using these. So it mimics this GLP-1 receptor. That's the action by binding to these already activated GLP-1 receptors we have in our body and certain tissues and certain cells. So this, this, what it does is it stimulates insulin release from the pancreas. It reduce, it reduces the glucagon uh, secretions, which slows gastric emptying, increasing feelings of fullness. Okay. And reduces appetite. So this is why it's so bloody effective. Um, the FDA approved this for type 2 diabetes, diabetes management and for weight loss. So it is approved for type 2 diabetes and weight loss in individuals with obesity and overweight with at least one weight-related core morbidity, which that's a massive population. So the semi-glutide is a medication that belongs to a class of drugs known as the GLP-1 receptor ag agonists. So it's a synthetic version of this glucagon-like peptide GLP-1 hormone. So I just want to be clear. This is a chemical synthetic version of what is naturally occurring in your body. And if you're a uh, spoiler alert, if you don't eat well, you lose the receptivity and you lose some of that GLP-1 receptivity and you lose your ability to make some more of it. But this, but this hormone, this GLP-1 is super critical in regulating blood glucose, appetite, and body weight management. So there's a, there's a trail here, right? It goes down over time because of lifestyle choices, et cetera, et cetera, and then has a cascade of effect. So when you increase more of the GLP-1 synthetic forms, then your body turns is has the ability to do what is natural if you actually were eating uh, correctly, if I were to say it that way. Okay, so the key features of semi-glutide. So the mechanisms of action again, are mimicking the effects of this natural GLP-1 hormone. It binds it to the active GLP-1 receptors located in various tissues, including pancreas, uh, um, uh, the intestinal tract, and the brain. When these receptors are activated, they trigger several physiological responses, such as stimulating insulin release from the pancreas, reducing glucagon secretion. So I'm just repeating this so you understand it. And then that feeling of fullness. That's how powerful GLP-1 receptors are. Again, it's naturally occurring in the body. So what's going on where we lose it? So now when you bring in a, an exogenous GLP-1 receptor like sem semi-glutide, then obviously it has those effects, but there's also some downsides. So again, uses in uh, diabetes, weight management, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's see. So semi-glutide's ability to improve blood sugar, weight loss, and potentially reduce with all of that, it, 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 has a reductional risk on cardiovascular events, obviously, because if you're are insulin sensitive and you're overweight, then obviously in type 2 diabetes and that's core morbidities added up on top of it. So obviously when you increase this ability to lower glycemic load and reduce weight and uh, feeling the sensation of fullness, uh, obviously, that has a massive effect on the cascade effect that was already going on in that person's body. So I just want to understand, we are not deficient in semi-glutide chemical. Again, we are not deficient in it. We have a mechanism of action that has led us to less GLP-1 in our naturally occurring body. So that's what we're going to talk about at the end. Okay, so, but there's also expanded applications. There's a ton of research around this. And obviously, listen, follow the money. 
they're doing a lot of testing around this. So there's some good stuff to it. If you have massive amount of weight and you can't get a control of this, then I, I mean, a lot of weight and you're sprinting towards a heart attack, then maybe. However, I, again, at the end of this episode, I'm going to tell you some of the great other aspects. So there was some studies done on semaglutide to help people quit smoking. Again, this hormone is in the body. So when you have more of it, your body does a lot of things a lot better. And there's also lowering the risk of, of type 2 diabetes. More studies show that 94, it was effective in as much as 94% prevention of diabetes and substantial impacts of long-term health outcomes, heart attack and disease risk. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. Also implications on longevity. Uh, there were some studies done. Again, all of these things are in the show notes. Uh, I put up, pulled up a lot of studies. By targeting several risk factors for chronic disease, this semi-glutide, this increased GLP-1, uh, can potentially lower uh, a lot of these core morbidities. However, some of the most alarming side effects are the one that is the most alarming to me again this was another study uh studies were linking it to suicidal ideations so suicidal thoughts uh now this is massively concerning so we're just playing with this thing and if and if one of the side effects is i'm thinking about suicide well what's the point of all of it then so we got to be very careful, which is why let's deal with the core stuff first, the foundational stuff, which I'm going to get to at the end. There's a lot of core stuff that you can do without this drug, okay, that turns on your own GLP-1 receptors. So there's a lot to go here. But the, the, the shot over the bow is there's some connection and links to suicide, okay? So that being said, let's do our best. So yes, there's some core morbidities. Yes, it's helping to uh, create sensitivity. It's increasing insulin from the pancreas. It's lowering diabetes risk, cardiovascular disease. It's doing a lot of things. However, you have to keep in mind, this is a naturally occurring GLP-1 hormone inside the body. We're just taking an outside source, but there's things that we can do about it. So let's talk about it, right? So natural ways to improve your body's own GLP-1 hormone production. Let's get into it. This is responsible for regulation, again, of appetite, insulin secretion, blood sugar levels. You can focus on a lot of things to do that. So let's not jump steps. Let's use common sense. There is ways, again, to improve your own body's natural GLP-1 hormone production. Guess what? Fiber-rich foods, vegetables, leafy greens. That's right, spinach, kale, broccoli, broccoli sprouts, and other fibrous vegetables go down the list what that does is it helps slow down digestion and enhance GLP-1 release. Brussels sprouts, broccoli sprouts, leafy greens, spinach, kale, chard, you name it. The wide array of colors. Also, those colors are anthocyanins, antioxidants. There's no, there's no, si there's no downside. There's only upside when you follow nature. Also, with those antioxidant-rich, it creates an environment to increase stem cells, lower oxidative stress, lower free radicals. You know, you know, you know what's going on. Guess what? Other fiber-rich foods increasing your GLP-1 production, legumes, beans, chickpeas, lentils, high-protein foods, high-fiber foods, are promoting satiety by increasing GLP-1 production. That's right, man. 
It's all in the plants. Whole grains, oats, barley, whole, obviously not GMO wheat, uh, which are rich. These oats and barley and all of these things are rich in soluble fiber, which improves GOP-1 levels and regulates blood sugar levels. That's right. This mechanism is within nature. What else can you do? Healthy fats, avocados, nuts, seeds, olive oil. GLP improves and enhances GLP-1 secretion and improves satiety, supports GLP production with nuts and seeds, and the olive oil incorporated this olive oil into the diet can improve the GLP-1 response due to these healthy fat uh, content. So listen, man, and again, protein-rich foods, fiber-rich foods, Beans, nuts, seeds, tofu, tempeh, uh, also yogurt. I, I love a kefir. I love coconut kefir. It's a fantastic way to improve GOP-1 production. Fermented foods. Again, there is no downside, only upside. So now not only prebiotics and probiotics for your good, healthy gut, with good brain, good immune system, good, healthy bacteria. It also supports GLP-1 production, influencing the gut microbiota. Come on, man. Kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir increases and improves your GLP-1 production. Amazing. Antioxidant-rich foods, like I said. Berries, the colors of all your fruits. Strawberries, berries, raspberries, dark chocolate, super, super, super dark chocolate. I eat 85% to 100% dark chocolate every day, every day. So this dark chocolate increases GLP-1 levels due to the polyphenol content, as well as the blueberries, the strawberries, the raspberries, antioxidants, rich increases GLP-1 secretion. Again, prebiotics, garlics, onions, leeks are all good prebiotics. Uh, bitter foods, bitter foods also stimulate GLP-1 production and help with the glucose regulation. So things like bitter dandelion greens, bitter melon, these kinds of things. Uh, adaptogen that I like has bitter, many different aspects to it, but bitter as well as schizandra, incredible adaptogenic herb. Lifestyle practices also, guess what? Enhance GOP-1 levels, particularly uh, level zone one and two. So moderate walking, aerobic activity, walking, running, cycling. Don't have to beat yourself up. Enjoy, enjoy the summer. Go for walks, go for hikes, go for bikes. Guess what? En- enhances GOP-1 levels. Mindful eating also improves GLP-1 secretion. So adequate sleep, poor sleep can impair GLP-1 levels. So maintaining that sleep window, seven to nine hours of sleep. I shoot for that eight. I usually get between seven and eight. Herbal supplements. These also massive support in GLP-1 levels. Berberine. B-E-R-B-E-R-I-N-E. This is a plant alkaloid that is shown to increase GLP-1 levels and improve insulin sensitivity. Fenugreek, incredible. Known for its ability to regulate blood sugar, fenugreek can also support GLP-1 production. Like I said, schizandra as well. All the adaptogens will help to improve your body's ability to reduce stress as well as improve GLP-1 production. Hydration. Notice how these are all common sense. Do you notice that? Do you notice that this is all based in science? I'm not making this up. Hydration, water, and herbal teas. Actually, staying hydrated supports overall metabolic function and can improve and maintain balance of the GLP-1 levels. Man, incorporating these foods, these supplements, these practices into your daily life through habit-forming activities can support and improve your body's GLP-1 production, which would then what? 
regulate your appetite, enhance insulin sensitivity, and, and maintain blood, blood levels, and also improving your metabolic health. And guess what happens then? You lose weight. Disease prevention goes way up. Disease goes away. Do you notice all of the things? And we're talking about Ozempic. We're talking about semi-glutide. We're talking about all that because we stole it from what was already in nature inside of us. We stole it. And now we, we've we taken an exogenous chemically made semi-glutide and now we're injecting it and saying this is the miracle. Guess what the miracle is, everybody? To live your super life is to turn on your common sense and eat from a variety of foods that supports your GLP-1. It supports a million other things for you to live your greatest life. It supports your brain, supports your stem cells, supports longevity, supports your mood. It goes on and on and on. I have a big bibliography here. I have a lot of research if you want to dig into it. This is what I love. Everyone's talking about the miracle of semi-glutide and ozempic when in fact you have it. You don't need a doctor. You don't need... Now listen, again, I'm going to say there's a lot of benefits that I am seeing within this. So if you are morbidly obese and are really dying, I think there's an application for it. And I, I don't judge anybody. I don't judge you. If that works for you, it is your choice. It's your sovereign choice to make whatever you decide to put in your body and to use as a tool. But just know that nature has your back. Your body has your back. If you're willing to follow her, follow nature, and just eat well, sleep well, exercise moderately, do these things that show and prove that it improves your GLP-1 receptors as well as many other things with no side effects, not suicide, but actually upside of feeling I have my super life and I'm kicking some ass and I have purpose and I have passion and I'm eating the bounty of what life has provided for me. That's my point of view. I love that we're finding stuff that can help people. I don't like the, the side effects that can happen. There's a, also what I didn't mention. There's a loss of a lot of muscle mass that can happen with those Empic and stuff. So you can lose weight, but you can lose a lot of muscle mass. And if you're losing a lot of muscle mass, that is a very bad long-term play. You won't do that if you go back and listen to all of the easy things that you can do to improve your natural ones and you will have muscle and you will be strong and you have no side effects and you will feel fantastic. Okay, you do you. Take that information. I'm not a doctor. I have dedicated my life to unpacking some of this stuff, digging into it. And this is information. Take this information, take it to your doctor, share this episode. It really come down, comes down to common sense. So that's what I believe. I don't miss out on the foundational things that can improve your health um, because there's so much power in your choice. There's so much power in your hand. Remember, I love you.